So we have analyzed the developer's vision and the art style of Stellar Blade, but today I wanted to talk about something a little bit more fun and relatable to our field in 3D animation. What separates good animations from great animations? I think most of us know when we see bad animations, but first let's distinguish bad animations from stylized animations. Whether an animation is good or bad is sometimes not necessarily super clear cut. For example, the animations in Minecraft are extremely simple, linear, and kind of unrealistic, but they fit perfectly within the world they're in, and they actually complement the game very well. So despite them being fairly unrealistic, I don't think most people would consider Minecraft's animation to negatively affect the gaming experience, and that's why I think most animators would say they're pretty good. Now let's talk about good animations. Good animations in game generally fit the action they're trying to depict. For example, if you are doing an 8 direction run or walking animation cycle, the rule of thumb is basically if the direction you're going looks like it syncs up with the animation that is playing, then usually you're doing pretty good. Essentially, it all comes down to communication. Does the animation that is playing successfully communicate to the player what is supposed to be happening? As long as you do that, then your animation is probably pretty good. So, how do we go from good to great? Well, to put it simply, a good animation will fit. But a great animation will convey personality. This is the difference between using stock and generic animations that you can find on the marketplace versus creating animations from the ground up specifically for the character you are moving. A lot of games nowadays use all-purpose generic animations for every character. This is especially a very common practice in first and third person shooters where all the characters have different looks and skins but they're all essentially sharing the exact same walking and running animations. Now, Keep in mind, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, and I am a firm believer that if your players are having fun, then that's ultimately what really matters. Sometimes expressing the personality of each character really isn't that important to the game, and if that's the case, then you kind of don't really need to recreate all the animations. But the power of personalized ground-up animations is an extremely useful tool developers have, and it should not be glossed over. For example, let's use the animations of Nier Automata. It's a game known for its super smooth and great feeling combat and beautiful animations. Let's look at 2B's walk animation. Simply a work of art. I can promise you that the animator for this motion probably spent more time on this walk cycle than any of the other attack animations because this animation communicates to the player information about the character. Imagine if we swapped Tubi's walk cycle with this generic Unreal 5 walking animation that comes with the engine. How would that change your perception of the character? It's probably hard for a lot of people to put into words, but the reason why it would make a lot of people uncomfortable is because it would clash with the personality of the character. Everything about 2B's design tells you she's a beautiful, feminine, elegant, and confident woman. But if you see her walk like a dude from the streets, now we have an animation that is conveying a completely different personality to what we thought we knew about the character. This walk cycle is consistent with 2B's personality, while this walk cycle is generic, boring, and blank. But it doesn't complement the character, and this perception is hard-grained into the human mind. There's a dark study for those of you who are interested in where they took a bunch of criminals and showed them footage of a bunch of different people walking in the streets. These criminals were then asked to identify which one of these people had been a victim of crime before, or would you choose to target? And just by looking at how these random people walked, without any other information, most of the criminals could all identify who had been a victim before and who they would choose to be their next victim. They could all tell who was weak and who was strong just by how they walked and how they stood. That is how much information your walk and your standing animation conveys to people in real life. It's literally a mirror of your personality, of your past, and how you'll probably behave in the future. So if you're trying to take an animation to the next level, consider the personality of the character you're trying to express. So let's take this information and see what we can learn about the differences between 2B and Eve's personality. This is 2B's walk. And this is Eve's walk.
Now, just from what you see here, can you take a guess and extrapolate what the differences in their personalities might be? Both are beautiful. Both are feminine. Both are confident. But they're not the same. And that's because their personalities are different. Real quick, in the comments right now, what do you think the differences are? Are you done? Okay, well, let me tell you what the main differences I feel from watching these two animations. 2B is more stoic. She's more precise, she's more methodical, and she's more careful. And she also feels a bit more mature. Eve's animation, on the other hand, is more friendly. It's more playful. It's more delicate, a little bit more relaxed, and it feels a little more innocent. To put it simply, 2B moves like a woman. Eve moves like a girl. And that is completely intentional. Eve's personality, despite being a high-trained fighter, is that she doesn't understand the world, and she constantly looks to other people for information when it comes to trying to understand her surroundings. And every single movement she makes perfectly reflects this mentality, which kind of makes sense because Eve in most stories represents the origin of all beauty and femininity. You cannot find Eve's animations floating around on the Unreal Marketplace. These animations were all handmade specifically for Eve, and that's what makes the animations for her gameplay feel amazing. And I would actually say the animation team for Stellar Blade really outdid themselves here. Truly a fantastic job because every single character, enemy, and boss clearly have animations that were specifically tailored for them. The monsters all have unique characteristics, weapons, and tactics that really demand very different animations. For example, if we look at this one here, it doesn't move anything like Eve at all. This animation conveys animalistic, aggressive, primal anger. It's violent, fast, and vengeful. Even the f***ing ground flailing animation attacks are extremely detailed. Now let's contrast that with the floaty squid woman enemy, which moves entirely differently. This enemy, while still being extremely aggressive, has a very different feel from the chainsaw head. It's graceful, it's feminine in nature, it's smooth and precise. You could not just grab a random enemy animation from the marketplace and dump it onto this enemy for the same effect. If you did, it would just feel very generic. The same way if you gave this enemy a basic ogre smash animation, it would lose all of its personality and ferocity. And the entire game is like this. Which is why, as a 3D animator myself, I am phenomenally impressed. Hats off to the animators for this project, because it's truly beautiful work. So, that is the difference between good animations and great animations. Thanks for watching, hope that helped, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.